Alright, so we're here for another edition of the PT Author Review. I'm John Sinclair. I get to be your host today. And today we're covering the book Exuberant Animal by Frank Ferencic. And we are going to cover some really cool concepts that I got to go over through the actual book itself. And then just maybe kind of go off onto a few tangents as we like to do. And really cover some of the things that I think will be really impactful for the community to hear a little bit about not only the book Exuberant Animal, but some of the things that Frank's doing. Frank, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Awesome. Could you tell us first a little bit about your background, uh, how you got Exuberant Animal going, and uh, tell us a little bit about what made you spawn, or what spawned the idea for writing the book? Well, I my education is in two basic areas. I studied human biology as an undergrad, which included a lot of study of human evolution. And at the same time, I was studying martial arts and really training hard. And I thought, there has to be a connection there. There has to be a connection between the history of the human body and the kind of movement that I love to do every day. And so that led to this curiosity and this investigation going deeper and deeper. And it led me to go to Africa because I really wanted to study where my body came from and appreciate what my history was. So I started writing essays, and eventually that came together in the book um, Exuberant Animal, and then the next book, Change Your Body, Change the World. So I've, I've just been turned on to the body for a very long time now. Very cool, very cool. One of the things that I found about the book that was really exhilarating was how you connected the dots between different parts of the book and then also really helped connect not only the anthropology of where we've come from and how we've evolved over this time, but even in where we're going into the future. And one of the things that really captured me was how you said that we're becoming visually so overwhelmed with everything from technology to uh, the industries even moving. You've seen like it's kind of moved away from health maybe in the early 50s and yeah. into more the, the visual appearance of everything. And now that we're being visually kind of bombarded with, with more technological advances, you said that we should maybe try to shift our focus to maybe some of the more tactile and kinesthetic senses. And you really illustrated that point quite vividly in the book. Could you maybe expand on how we might be able to do that if we worked in a club or gym setting, or if we were just about to do that with our kids and, and playing at home? Right. Well, I guess first I would, I would take a little historical view on this, and the idea that our bodies evolved in natural settings, and our skin is, is very much a sensory organ, and we're very tactile. That's one of our uh, most ancient senses. Vision is more recent. And with the proliferation of not just cameras, but mirrors, and of course all our computers over the last several hundred years now, we've really come to dominate with vision and spend less time doing a tactile approach. So this is something I think that a lot of people are craving and not having that tactile experience has consequences that are psychophysical. In other words, I think a lot of people start to feel anxiety and even depression because they're not contacting the world in the way that we normally would. So I think this is a place where trainers can come in and get people more in contact with the natural world through things like barefooting. I think barefooting is a great new trend. And even more than that, just getting our skin exposed to open air and to the sun and just to wind and rain and the, the whole range of elements, barefooting whenever possible, it's, um, it's all about exposure. And that's, that's what paleo is. If you live in a paleo environment, it's all about exposure. Right. And our bodies are designed for that. Right. Fantastic. You also mentioned how important rhythm is in, in establishing, I guess, not only just normalcy or a normal homeostasis, but we started teaching a little bit about all the different rhythms in the body and, and so we're covering not only the cardiovascular rhythm but even the rhythm and timing of our movements. Why do you think that's so important for us to not only be able to study but to understand and how to apply that? 
Well, you can almost turn that question around and you can ask, is there anything in the body or the natural world that is not rhythmic? Because virtually every quality and every phenomenon we look at the, in terms of physiology or in the wider natural world is all rhythmic. When you're on a small planet orbiting the sun, you have all these seasonal and circadian variations. And you look back at the history of life on Earth, the most primitive organisms all have this circadian beat to them. And so this light, dark cycle sets the stage for our rhythmic physiology. But that's just the beginning. You know, all the, the cycles of our hormonal levels and our blood pressure, every quality of our body going up and down. And we're starting to figure this out, of course, in our periodized training. That all makes sense. But we there's even more work to be done there to make our training more seasonal and it, it's all rhythm. And, you know, the African drummers had it right. You know, it's all about rhythm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the questions that I had was, and this really popped right out at me, is you talked about the concept of nourishing, nourishing the body. And it's funny the connotations that you have for one particular word because when I heard nourishment before, my natural response is just food, getting good nutrients into your body. But you talk about nourishment through, I believe it's five different areas, and one of them being food. But talk a little bit about how important nourishment is, not only uh, for physical, but mental and emotional well-being. Right, well, that ties into this recent um, symposium I went to, the Ancestral Health Symposium, where there's a lot of focus on food, a lot of focus on natural diets, which is great. But being somewhat of a contrarian, I, I pointed out, I said, man does not live by food alone. Our bodies and our spirits are nourished in many different ways. Um, most particularly, I think, is the social dimension. I mean, we, our bodies and our spirits are very much nourished by other people around us. We, as hyper-social animals, we really crave that contact with one another, and we crave that contact with the natural world. And we can go for a pretty long time without eating. We can go even a pretty long time with a poor quality diet, but we need these other things as well to really keep our, our bodies whole. So I open it up. I have a range. <laughs> well, no, you made a great... Uh, great segue to my next question because I believe that we have I personally believe and I don't know if this is 100% a truth or not but I think more people come to try to join a club and join a gym is because of that sense of belonging that there's probably going to be a certain bunch of people that are there that want or want to achieve the same things that I do which you know that's an easy way to connect with your community so we also believe that group personal training is becoming much, much more popular. Uh, URSA has proven it in, in their statistics over the last few years. I do most of my personal training is, is in a group. Do you believe that that can be one way in which we enhance the group personal training tribe, I call it, and try to get more and more people in is just enhancing that social community and, and unity in our groups? Right, and that's... That's totally consistent with what we know about human evolution. Are you still with me? It looks yep. kind of... Okay, good. I'll, I'll repeat that one. So I think this is totally consistent with what we know about human evolution because all the anthropology has demonstrated that the natural human group, the, the unit of social interaction is a tribe, usually between 30 to 60 to maybe 100 individuals. That seems to be the unit. If you get more people than that, then it tends to splinter off and become two tribes. And there's actually a tie into the human brain. Our cognitive capacity for social interaction kind of limits us to 30 to 60 individuals. Right. And that's where we feel the most comfortable. So when people join groups, they, they just love that. That's where they, they feel most at home. And, of course, that, that's going to play out in the, the training environment. If for me, it played out in the martial art world because you go to a martial arts school, and what do you know? There's 30 to 60 to maybe 100 people in the school. You get to know all their faces and their bodies. You see them several times a week, and it really gives you that feeling of tribe. So. Yeah. That's very, very important. 
That's yeah, awesome. Huge. So we've talked a little bit about play and, and how to get more play and games involved in, in our personal training sessions. Yet we come back and we find that some of our trainers are reluctant to incorporate play and games into the actual training sessions themselves. What advice would you have for trainers in learning about play and maybe some of the benefits of incorporating play into their training sessions to make them feel like they they too can incorporate this without maybe maybe making people feel apprehensive to want to play? Right, that's a great question because I've run into this. Um, I've been teaching martial arts for a long time and even at that, I noticed a lot of people are reluctant to play. People in the modern world are very inhibited about moving their bodies in general, and they're very inhibited about moving their bodies spontaneously and in any way that might be perceived as silly or frivolous. You know, we, we want to be adults and we want to be workers and we want to be serious people, right? Well, somehow we have to get over that inhibition. And that's the challenge for a trainer who wants to, to teach play. What I do, I, I kind of put it in a framework of discipline and in a framework of hard work. I encourage people to sweat. And I say, look, this is scientifically valid. People have been playing. We're mammals. We've been playing for literally millions of years. And in fact, if you go back before human history, into the history of mammals, this goes back tens of millions of years. So it's ancient. And it's it can be difficult because people play in different ways. People play at different levels. And it, it is a tremendous challenge for the trainer. But if you can find ways to make it work, then it builds on itself. Perfect. Where can trainers find trainers and other members of our community find Exuberant Animal and Change Your Body, Change the World? How can they get a hold of you and how could they get your book? Well, you can go to the, the Exuberant Animal website, just exuberantanimal.com. It's also on Amazon. And there is also available the Exuberant Animal Play book, which is the collection of the games that I use and that I've derived from martial art training and that sort of thing. So uh, people enjoy that book. It's great. It's spiral bound and you can just throw it on the floor and pick out a game and away you go. Awesome. Love it. What's new? What's coming up for you? Where, where are you going to be headed? What are you going to be doing in the next little bit? Well, I'm actually working on building a dojo in the mountains in the Cascades in Washington. Wow. And that's a big project for me yeah. to build this play-based dojo, and yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've just written another book called Stress Craft, and that's available as an ebook. And, of course, I'm continuing to write about paleo themes and yeah. play-based movement and that sort of thing. So uh, I'm, I'm very active, and I really enjoy it. Good for you. Well, thank you so much for, for spending some time out of your precious day to talk to our community. I know everyone's going to be really excited about this video, so... Thanks once again, Frank. Make sure everybody goes out, get Exuberant Animal. It's an amazing book. Check out all his other books that he's authored. They're fantastic. Thanks again, Frank. Cheers. Thank you much.